Good morning, people. Watch them at 65. Lisa Boyce. I'm on early because I have to take the car in to get service this morning. So, yeah. I got to give you this article. And it came, one of my subscribers sent this to me yesterday or last night. Let me give you a verse of scripture. It is actually out of 1 Corinthians 15. 1551. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's the rapture, which is going to happen any time now. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's funny that the rapture and the gospel are in the same chapter. But that's a coincidence though, right? Yeah. Gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith. In Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe. That's the key word. Believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in his blood, the moment you accept him as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus, rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time, protected by the blood of Jesus, and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, and change you if you let him. If you let him. So... This came out of, uh, on Breitbart last night. Now, I smell a coup. With all this stuff that's going on, I smell a coup. I just looked at the Wailing Wall, and a, I think it was literally almost hundreds of soldiers were at that wall uh, about an hour ago. This is a big war. This is, uh, I believe, like I've been saying all along, this is... Psalm 83 and the beginnings of Ezekiel 38, 39, all wrapped up in a nice, neat package. It is. And throw a little bit of Isaiah 17, 1 in there. It is. That's, I've said that these two are together. Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38, 39 are together. I mean, some people disagree with that. It don't really matter. I don't really care. Um, this goes on to say that the White House is using a four-part plan to try to overthrow Netanyahu. Now, good luck with that. Really? Because God is still in control. It says the Biden White House is attempting to overthrow the elected government of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu using a four-part plan that reportedly involves the United Nations and left-wing activists in Israel. Now, as you know, the GPS system was jammed. I did a uh, video yesterday. The GPS systems in Israel was, was jammed. Anytime you got Russia looking over into your backyard, you got, a, you got problems. And that's what's happening right now. That's why all those soldiers were at that wall this morning. This is huge. So the report published by columnist Caroline Glick at the Jewish News Syndicate, and she's also she does a lot of stuff on um, Prophecy News Watch, cites text messages from activist uh, Amy Dror, which were first reported by Israel's Channel 14, the equivalent of Fox News in the local Israeli media. So she wrote, Glick wrote, based on what he referred to as a conversation with his contacts in the White House, Dror set out a granular detail to uh, granular detail the White House's four-part plan to overthrow the government. 
The components involved actions on the ground in Gaza, the use of the United Nations Security Council, extortion of government ministers, and, and mass protests. In his words, government ministers are receiving messages from American friends that they will be accused of war crimes. Now, let me stop there. Last night, while all this was going on, you got a lot of Mossad or Mossad people leaving Israel, all in droves. Some of these ministers are leaving, going to Europe and other places. They're leaving because they know what's about to go down. And then this comes out. It says that under the radar, the U.S. and the European Union have framed the hunger in northern Gaza as a war crime. This is an excuse for seizing control over the territory from Israel, parachuting food continuously, including by, uh, by the uh, German military, and building a port. But the words potential indictment for all members of government of destruction is the clincher. How does it work? <clears throat> there are many... <clears throat> there are many members of the government that don't want to lose their physical or economic freedom. The immediate targets are billionaire economy minister uh, Nir, I think his name is Nir Barkat, by freezing assets and turning the millionaire into a wanted man. And the Harati parties, they are, they and their communities worldwide have many properties, ministers in the government will become potential fugitives if they don't enable the formation of a government without the Kahanist. Don't be surprised if Derry and I think another person here bring down the government soon. The Harati draft is just an excuse. Their Harati cronies in America don't want to get in trouble with Uncle Sam. So this is how they can do this. The United States can freeze assets in other countries. That's what they're planning on doing. Anytime you talk about freezing people's money, you got their attention. Especially if they have if they're billionaires. And the important thing us and President Biden's request from us. The American method of dealing with misbehaving states includes the destruction, economic and legal, that is centered on the leadership on the one hand and driving a wedge between the nation, the nation, and the leadership. In our case, for this to work, the nation of Israel must show in the streets that it is fighting the leadership. The American administration needs to see the nation in Israel fighting the government of Israel. Isn't this something? They're going to try to overthrow him, but God has other plans. And that's what they don't understand. Don't mess with Israel. That's why all this stuff is happening right now. Because of this administration taking his hand off of Israel, but yet trying to hurt Israel. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. The text messages were first reported March 17th, a few days after Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called for new elections in Israel to oust Netanyahu. Joe Biden endorsed Schumer's statement. Several days later, the Biden administration took the extraordinary step of allowing a United Nations Security Council resolution to pass that accepted Hamas's terms. Ceasefire first, then hostage release and isolated Israel. Several days before that, oh, and by the way, to show you that God is not playing, after this thing went into effect, the first barge on that bridge in Maryland. That bridge collapsed. That's just the beginning. I said back then, when that bridge collapsed, that was the relationship of the United States and Israel collapsing. That's what it showed. That was a type and shadow of that happening. Now everything else is falling down. 
into place, actually. So, several days later, the Biden administration took the extraordinary step of allowing the United Nations Security Council resolution to pass that accepted Hamas's term. Several days before that, Israel's opposition figure, Benny Gantz, the main rival to Netanyahu, who currently serves alongside him in an emergency government of national unity, visited the White House. Now, according to Dror, according to, um, what's her name? Um, Amy Dror, that's her name, Amy Dror. According to her, Gantz was supposed to have done more to stabilize Netanyahu's government and was rebuked by the administration on Wednesday. Gantz, who had originally criticized Schumer, reversed himself, calling for new elections. Gantz appeared to have seized the opportunity for three reasons. One, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza has escalated with the accidental killing of seven aid workers from the World Central Kitchen. Number two, the Netanyahu government faces first serious internal disagreements over the issue of drafting ultra-Orthodox men into the military. And number three, a four-day protest was organized by the Israeli left outside Netanyahu's office and briefly at his home. Moreover, U.S. intelligence agencies had also predicted protests to overthrow Netanyahu just before Gantz's visit. At, that, at the time, there was no serious anti-government protests. The country was focused on war and on those people being released. What looks like a color revolution in Israel, the second such attempt after the Biden administration's involvement in last year's divisive protests over judicial reform appears to have been in the works for several weeks. Several weeks. One of the early stages matching Dror's predictions was Vice President Campbell. Her attempt to distinguish between the Israeli government and the Israeli people. Meanwhile, Israel faces Iranian-backed terrorists on all four of its borders, <clears throat> including Russia. Like I said, Russia's sitting right there in the Golan Heights, looking right over the fence in Israel, waiting to attack. This is bad. And I do feel in my heart of hearts, and I'm not saying that the rapture is going to happen. I don't know. But something big is about to happen right now. And I believe when I saw all those soldiers at that wall this morning, they're preparing for something. Now tomorrow or sometime this week coming up, God only knows what's going to happen. But they are planning something. I'm going to put this in the description box. Um, let me see if anything else has come up. Hold on a minute. Uh, now, he had some... Um, there were some developments late last night with this thing, with uh, this war or with this jamming of Israelis' uh, communication. So last night, and like I said, I know Hal Turner hate, hates Israel. I know that for a fact. But unfortunately, he goes in depth with his news. So he had a um, he had a update last night. So last night, around seven thirty six, this is what came in. The Russians are providing intel and material to Syria and in Iran. 
much like NATO is to Ukraine. So uh, symmetrical and clandestine warfare seems about to become direct conflict sooner rather than later. Now, if Israel wanted to use the Samson option, they could. They could. But I think God is going to intervene somehow. I don't know how. I don't know what's going to happen here. But this is this is huge. It says the Israeli citizens are now beginning to evacuate in mass on their own accord. There has not been an order to evacuate. So panicked are some. They've begun driving down the wrong side of the roads. It was chaos last night in uh, Israel. So the perception among Israeli citizens is that incoming missile attacks from Iran and likely Hezbollah are so imminent they feel the need to leave. U.S. and coalition forces in the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq have reportedly began placed on high alert. So reports indicate that the troops have been told to be ready for a possible ballistic or cruise missile attack by the Israeli, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran against facilities in and around the city of uh, Erbil, which Iran claims are operated by members of Israeli intelligence. The attack would likely be in response to the Israeli attack this week against the Iranian embassy compound in Damascus. So there you go, right there. That was the last update. If he has anything else, I'll bring it on. I don't like linking stuff from him in my description box. Some people have asked, well, can you link that? I'm like, no, no. I just read from it. So you know who it's from. I'm not holding back about that. I'm not secret. It's from him, Hal Turner. So, And Eric Stockelback basically reiterated this last night. So, But I'm going to link this article from Breitbart in the description box, and I will be back on later today. Thank you. Just keep prayed up, folks. Don't, it's nothing to fear. I mean, you should be excited because we're about to go home. That's what all this is saying. We are about to go home. The church is about to leave. So I'll be back later. Thank you.